Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to know about the global infrastructure of AWS, then types of storage in the AWS, then move to hands on on create EBS volume and finally create the S3 bucket. Let's start with the AWS global infrastructure. There are many parts in the global infrastructure. We will going to talk about regions and availability zones. Let's see the definition. Region is the group of two or more availability zones. Availability zones is the subdivision of regions. Here the blue dot represents the presently available regions and the red dots represent the upcoming regions. At present there are 24 regions consist of 77 availability zones and they are announced to plan for 18 more availability zones in 6 regions in Australia, India, Indonesia, Japan, Spain and Switzerland. In AWS, most of the services are region scoped services. Some of them are auto scaling, SQS, S3, cloud sketch and elastic load balancing. Some services like RDS, Elastic Catchy, EC2 are availability zone based. Rest services like IAM, Phi3, CloudFront are globally scoped services. Okay, let's check start with IAM. We seen that the IAM is the global list service, so it shows the IAM does not require the region selection. Okay, now search for EC2. EC2 is not a global service, so it is mandatory to select the region in EC2. Now see about what are the parameters considered while choosing a region. First one is the proximity. When you choose the region, you must make sure it should be close to you and your customer. Second thing is cost. Obviously cost is really important to us. Certain region will cost more than other. We can use AWS calculator to do cost estimation so that we can choose the right amount for our region. Next one is service level agreement. Likewise cost service level agreement also vary with the region. So we need to ensure that what our needs are. Final one is most important that is compliance because sometimes some features may not be accepted in some regions. So we need to choose the correct one. These are the things we must remember while choosing the region. Right. Now consider you will store your data in North Virginia that is US East 1 region. Your data are multiplied to all the availability zones in those region. If one of that availability zones get down, you can access those data from other two regions. That's a benefit for us. For the clear understanding, see about comparatively. Region is the geographical location, whereas the availability zones are the isolated locations. Region consists of the isolated location that is availability zones and the availability zones are the physical data centers of the regions. We are already seen that the services based on regions are auto scaling, Amazon S3, Elastic Load Balancing. Availability zone services are EC2, RDS and Elastic Catchy. Regions are referred as US East 1, whereas availability zones are the subdivision of regions. So it is referred as US East 1A, US East 1B, 1C like that. Now move to the next topic that is the types of storage available in the AWS. There are three types. First one is the block storage, second one is the file storage and the third one is the object storage. See in detail, first one is the block storage. In block storage, data are stored as block within the sectors and tracks. The example for block storage is on hard disk and pen drives. Second one is the file storage. In the file storage, data are stored as organized in the hierarchical file systems. Third one is the object storage. Here, the data are stored as object in massively scalable container with a globally unique identifier. It is the combination of block and file storage. The example for the object storage are Dropbox and Amazon S3. In AWS, block storage services are EBS and EC2. Here, data are used in raw and unformatted. It is accessed by only one instance at a time. Instance stored is used to store the temporary data, whereas EBS is used to store the persistence data. The services based on the file storage are EFS. Here, data structures that keep track of the related set of data. It can be accessed by the multiple instances at a time through the NPS protocol. It is used as the cluster of database and document sharing.
object storage based services are s3 and glacier direct access to the data without transferring through directories it can be accessed by the user who have the access to bucket through http or https protocols let's start the quick demonstration on creation of ebs value and attach those with ec2 instance ebs are nothing but it provides the persistent block level storage values for use with ec2 instance Let's open the EC2 dashboard in the AWS console and create the EC2 instance which we have seen in the last video. Yes, I have created the instance. It was in the running status. Okay, now check the volume. It has the 8 GB volume. It was created attached with the EC2 instance. Now we are going to create the additional volume. Click create volume and choose the general in the volume type and give the size by default. I have given the 20 GB and choose the availability zone and the availability zone must be same as the region of the EC2 instance we have created before. My EC2 availability zone is US East 1C. So I have chosen the same in here. Okay, now give any tag. Then click create volume. Now click it here. Now the volume is ready. Now check you have two volume. One is 20 GB now we are created now and 8 GB that has created with the EC2 instance. But the state of 20 GB volume which we are created now are not in use. So we need to attach that volume into EC2 instance. So choose the volume and go to action attach volume. I choose the EC2 instance which we are I created before and give attach now check the state it's both are in use now open the putty by the key pair of the east instance which we are attached with the volume okay now I check the storage but it does not show the 20 GP which we are created newly now I am going to list the block. Yes. Now it shows both 8 GP and 20 GP storage. Now I will check the status of the volume. If it shows as data, then it means the volume is empty. Type the following codes to attach the 20 GP with new volume. Now it attaches the 20 GP with a new volume. Now I am going to terminate the instance. Yes, it is successfully terminated. Now go to the volume and check how many volumes are available. Yes, it's only newly created 20 GP volumes are available. We can use this as the external hard disk. Finally, move to the creation of S3 bucket and upload the files and also done the same with the command line interface. Amazon S3 provides the scalable and highly durable object storage in the cloud. Okay, let's start. Open the AWS Manual Console. In the services, S3 is available in the storage section. Amazon S3 interface looks like this. And in the bucket, you create bucket. Give the UniQ name for the bucket. Otherwise, it shows error to create the bucket. And then select the region to where you need to create your bucket. For the demo, I allow to the public access, then only you can access with the URL and give create bucket. Now our bucket is successfully created. Now we can able to create the files or folder to upload into the bucket. First I am going to add files inside the bucket. I am choosing one zip file. Once you select the file, you can able to give the upload. It starts to upload. Yes, now upload gets finished now I am going to create the new folder give the name for the folder now the folder is successfully created now I am going to move the zip file inside the folder yes it's moved successfully now go to the bucket open the zip file which are in the folder if you click there it will show those details and properties click the object URL and paste it into the new tab but it shows access unit the mistake is we are not give the permission to the public access now go to the permission and click edit 
in that give read for the everyone public access once you give it allows and then give the confirmation and save the changes now go to the tab and refresh yes now my gif is accessed by using the object url now proceed the same process with the aws command line interface for that we need the iam user id open the iam inside the security and identity section in the services once you open iam dashboard looks like this go to the user then give add user give the unique name for the username and the access type must be the programmatic access and give next in the permission we need to select the attach existing policies directly click it here choose the administrative access and give next we can able to add the tags here review the details and click create user now it's created successfully now you can download the csv file which contains access key id and the security access key which we can use in later once the download gets finished keep it for later now we need the aws cli if you have means open directly otherwise go to the new tab and download it click the first link it has the two versions the new version contains for only the 64 bit but my system is 32 bit so i have downloaded the old version once the download gets finished just open that and give next give allow for the license agreement and give next give the path to download and give install it takes some time to install all the packages just wait and give next yes it's installed successfully now open the command line by clicking windows plus r and type cmd yes now the command line is opened successfully aws configure it acts for access key and security key and region you can get this access key and the security by the csv file we have downloaded yearly now create the bucket by give the unique name yes it shows my bucket let's check open the s3 bucket and the refresh yes it shows my new bucket now i am going to upload the file into that bucket first i copy the path of the file which i am going to upload and paste it here and I enter the following command yes it shows upload let's check now my image is uploaded successfully go to that details page and copy the object url paste it into the new tab yes it's working successfully now i am going to delete my bucket only the empty bucket can able to delete so i need to delete the object inside the bucket first now the object inside the bucket gets deleted now i am going to delete the bucket okay let's check yes the bucket is deleted successfully for free trial users make sure to delete the instance volumes and bucket otherwise you will be get billing for those things thank you